This uh, lecture is going to be about the scheme programming language. We're going to focus a little bit more on the basics. So uh, we're going to go slow. We're going to go through the history a little bit. And we're going to go through some of the main concepts and also a little bit of the syntax, just enough that you can start reading some of it and, and get a sense of how it works. The history. So um, there is a family of Lisp languages. Lisp stands for list processing. This means that in this world, in this family of programming languages, it looks at the world as a bunch of collections and these collections are linked lists. So when you process lists, then you can work with something called a recursive uh, method and so all you have to worry about is the first item of that list and then that will point to the next item so there's not very much in terms of state handling here that we've got to be concerned about scheme um, according to this image that i found comes from lisp but there are also some ideas borrowed from algo 60. i don't know how true this is i have not done the research to dig into that but it would be interesting to see if it were. Um, the thing that I do want to show is that there are some common languages that are similar to Scheme. And what we're going to look at is mostly this idea of like Scheme and then specific R number RS uh, dialects. Similar to this will be like Common Lisp and maybe even like if you work with Emacs editor, the ELISP uh, language is also very similar. The similarities is more in how it looks like in terms of like it's a prefix notation. You have the function and then you have the variable name or method name and then the um, inputs. We'll go through all this. Um, so, you know, tying into the previous uh, slide, scheme is a dialect of LISP. LISP stands for List Processing Language. There's a lot of different versions for Scheme, and these are all based on formal published reports called Revised Report on Scheme. So that's taken from the name of the report for the Algol 60 language. So, you know, there's a lot of like um, passing traditions down kind of, you know, since the 60s and 70s. Traditions are passed down sometimes, and in this case, the scheme authors are very much trying to uphold the tradition set forth by the Algo 60 report by utilizing a similar name for their report, um, you know, in their release of a version of scheme. There's multiple dialects or variations on the scheme language. GNU Guile is one, and it is published by the GNU Foundation. You have Chez Scheme, Chicken Scheme, Racket. Racket's pretty popular. And um, there's a few others out there. Um, the point is, you have the official revised report versions, and then you have the other implementations. And these are just produced by different teams and different people who just feel like having different uh, variations. So this is kind of going back to the idea that different artists, music artists, can cover the same song but in different styles. So, you know, th this is what it means by dialect, that somebody wants to take those ideas but transform them a little bit just to implement it slightly different. And the implementation difference could be like different operating systems or different uh, features and so on. All right, that's, you know, a little bit uh, different than where I want to focus now. Um, now I want to focus a little bit more on the language and how to think in Scheme. There is a philosophy, okay, and it is that is very much about the essence and the minimalness of programming. It is about reducing all the all the stuff related to programming right like if you were to 
if you were to tackle a problem with Java, you have to think about the objects and the classes and all the relationships between them. In Scheme, you don't really have to think about all that. And instead of that, you think about what is the thing that I need to do, right? The what part declarative and just express that. So I thought the funny thing would be to talk about minimalism and whether or not it sparks joy because in declarative land, you really want to just keep the bits of code that spark joy. Or maybe perhaps it's like the fact that it's so minimal that it sparks joy. I guess we're going to see some examples together here. So a few concepts in order to work with Ski. The first concept is to understand this parentheses, uh, what that means. Okay. It's like, think of it like mathematics, right? When you have nested parentheses together, you're saying evaluate the inner loop or sorry, evaluate the inner uh, parentheses prior to uh, the outer items. So think math, I guess, for here. And then also uh, in, inside this evaluate expression, the items are in prefix form. So I put some mathematics here just so you can see and remind yourself what prefix means. Prefix is where the operator comes before the operand. So here we have the operator plus and then the numbers one and two. And so what would happen as the output from this is it would add the numbers one and two together and produce three. The next example is 22 and 44. So you can see how you can have different numbers uh, multiple digits, you know, there's no space in between these numbers. So then it's 22 and 44 and the space in between them is what signifies that it's a different input. So you see how knowing the BNF syntax and having an idea of how that works from before now leads into if you can read that and you can understand that it's all about recognizing patterns, then now you could see it like plus one, two equals three. So now plus 22, 44 is um, 66. Now, the next example is gonna be a little bit uh, different, okay? But it's still prefix form. So the function is define, and now define is saying the first input that is given in this parentheses is the name of uh, the variable that you want to define a value and attach a, uh, a value to. The value that we have here is hello CISC3140. And so now for the rest of the program, you now have X referring to this string value. And so this is how the concept, the first concept is the evaluate function. This is how the evaluate works. Second concept is list processing. This is how you should view the inputs. Um, everything's a list and specifically a linked list. If you remember from 3130 and data structures class, a linked list requires having a head in the list and then the head points to the next and the next points to the next and so on and so forth. If you have a doubly linked list, right? Then it can go both directions and so on, but we're not even worried about that at this point. We're only working about, uh, we're only working with the simple list, simple link list, which in Java is going to look like in the square brackets, a series of elements in a list, but in scheme, it's going to look a little bit more like you have evaluate five, and then that's nested in evaluate four and five and so on. So this is how the list really looks like under the hood and scheme, but instead it is going to be written as with the literal uh, single quote and the numbers one, two, three, four, five. Now, if you want to get the head of the link list, you're going to use C-A-R. This is an acronym and it means contents of the address part of the register. And this comes from a historical system 
uh, when they use magnetic tapes. And this would be where the first element is located. So a car refers to that first element. Tail and uh, CDR is another acronym that stands for contents of the decrement part of the register. And so that would give you everything else from the list. So the head element would be the first element retrieved with car and the rest is CDR. So you can think of a little caterpillar with the head and then the rest of its body. You have to use an apostrophe to make it literal. If you don't, then scheme's gonna think it's something else. So that leads to the third concept, list literals. A single apostrophe is needed to make it literal. So it's recognized as a list as opposed to the evaluate function. So for instance, if you, in the uh, command REPL area, if you add um, five and three together, you get eight. But if you put a apostrophe, then it's a literal and you get that expression returned. Okay, so those are the three concepts, evaluate list processing and then list literals. And just to end this first part, it's good to remember how the math with prefix notation works. It's of the form operator and then two operands. So examples are plus one and three, which gives you four, or divided by six and two, and you get three. And so you can see here, it is possible to have different kinds of numbers. You don't have to say they're both ints or they're both doubles. You can mix it up to have decimal and not decimal, and Scheme's gonna be smart enough to figure it out. Now, you can, excuse me, you can nest elements into where the operand part is. So now you can see you can have the first one as a one, and the second part is uh, another function. And then within there, the two, is the section that can have more and so on. And this would still continue to evaluate to um, the answer. So the prefix notation, lots of parentheses are required. And an operation uh, that takes two inputs is shown here. And so you can follow the colors to kind of see, you know, for the eyes to see how the order of precedence in, in terms of where things are calculated is going to happen. But um, the idea is that if you write scheme code, you're going to end up with a lot of parentheses. So that's the point I wanted to make. So that's a thing to prepare for. So with that said, I'm going to end this video and take time to practice uh, working through these problems to figure out what might be returned.